Welcome to Electra Online, and now we're going to talk about the next era since the Big Bang called the Radiation Era, which began at the decoupling, at the moment of decoupling, which meant when the radiation began to float freely or zoom freely through the universe, so to speak. Um, that happened about 380,000 years after the Big Bang. So what happened was that the universe had cooled sufficiently to about 3,000 Kelvin to the point where the electrons no longer were ionized away from the protons and they began to recombine into atoms. And so we had atomic hydrogen now. And because of that, the, the radiation, what, which we now know as the cosmic um, uh, microwave background radiation, was able to freely roam throughout the universe pretty well undisturbed by the matter. And so matter and radiation became separated, and that's what we call decoupling. And after that, we, we fell into a complete and utter darkness. The universe became, became completely without visible light, completely without stars and galaxies, just hydrogen, some helium, some radiation, but the radiation was no longer at the visible wavelength, it was now at the infrared wavelength, and let's find out why. Going back to Wien's law, realizing that the temperature at the start of this, this era, the matter era, or I should say the radiation era, and I didn't write that down here, so let me write that down. So the radiation era, the radiation, uh, the wavelength of the radiation could be determined using Wien's law by taking the constant divided by 3000 Kelvin, and we get 970 nanometers. Now remember that visible light falls in the range of 400 to 700 nanometers, 700 for red light, so therefore 970 mil uh, nanometers is in the infrared range. We can no longer see that. It becomes invisible to us. And so now the, radi the radiation filling the universe was now infrared radiation, no visible light, and the universe came completely dark. Now what we did find, though, in the universe is that the matter was not evenly distributed. So when we take a, a picture of the radiation universe, we noticed that some radiation had sl slightly longer wavelengths and some radiation had slightly shorter wavelengths. So the shorter ones are indicated in blue, the, um, I should say the longer wavelengths are indicated in blue, and the shorter wavelengths are indicated in red. So looking at the cosmic background radiation from the universe, that then, of course, filled and permeated through the entire universe after the, the decoupling, we noticed there were slight fluctuations in the wavelength and therefore the frequency of that radiation. In some cases, the radiation was a little bit longer in wavelength. In some cases, the radiation was a little bit shorter in wavelength. And so we tried to figure out what happened. So we did realize there was a density variation in the in the matter in the universe at that point because that would then point to a variation in the wavelength. And let me explain why. In regions where there was more matter, it was more dense, there would be more gravitational attraction, and so therefore the radiation tried to move away from those regions would have what we call gravitational redshift. They would be shifted into the longer wavelengths, therefore it would represent a cooler portion of the radiation. And where there was less, radi where there was less matter, there would be less gravitational pull, so radiation could could fly away from those regions more easily and therefore there would be less of a shift and therefore those would therefore be shorter wavelengths and represent hotter regions in the, in the radiation of the universe. And so we realized then by looking at the very careful measurements made by the COBE satellite of the background radiation that the matter must have been distributed unevenly to even throughout the very beginning of the universe. It must have been very slight fluctuations. We think that came from the very slight fluctuations at the quantum mechanic level when the universe was still very tiny in the very first portion of the first fraction of a second. And so that then uh, became the slight variation in the density of the universe as the universe unfolded into what it was then right after decoupling. So because of that, we're trying to figure out how did the universe became what it is today. We now know that the universe has billions, over 100 billion galaxies at least, and that those galaxies tend to be um, distributed along kind of a stringy region of the universe with vast voids between them. And we believe that the structure of the universe today had a lot to do with how the matter was distributed in density back then at the very early age of, age of the radiation era. So what we're seeing then is that the regions where there was longer wavelengths coming from it, therefore a denser matter there, that that's where the galaxies and stars began to form because the gravitational pull was stronger there, matter coalesced uh, more easily into more denser regions which then began to form stars and galaxies. And so along these regions where the density was higher, that's where galaxies would form. In the regions where density is lower, that's where voids would form. And in a later video, we'll talk a little bit more about how exactly that happened and how we were able to calculate that. 
So what we're then trying to figure out is by taking measurements of the, of the early radiation in the universe and by trying to make pictures of the earliest galaxies that we can possibly find in the universe, of course we have to start looking for them in the infrared region because those galaxies are so far away that the redshift of those galaxies of that light is so large that it would have been shifted into the infrared. So in some cases the only way we can see those very early galaxies, if we can find them, they would be in the infrared radiation band. And so we began to look for those. In the last few years, we actually found some galaxies that now know uh, formed within less than one billion years of the formation of the universe, within one billion years of the Big Bang. One galaxy was found to be about 480, year, 40, 480 million years after the Big Bang old. So that galaxy is now almost 13.3 or 13.4 billion years old. We found another one that was even older that had formed about 380 million years after Big Bang, which is now believed to be about 13.37 billion light years away. So when did galaxies begin to form? Well, before galaxies can form, you have to have stars. So when did the first stars begin to form? Well, we believe that since the decoupling, probably about 150 million years went by before the, before the first stars began to form. We think it's somewhere between 150 and 500 million years. Of course, since we already found galaxies that are less old than that, we know that stars must have formed sooner than that, but not sooner than 150 million years. So imagine a universe that had only hydrogen atoms, some helium atoms, for 150 million years just infrared radiation, no visible light, the universe would have been pitch black, completely devoid of any sort of light. It would have been a, an incredibly boring, interesting place. I don't know how you would call that, but imagine for that long a period of time there was absolutely no light in the universe. And until the matter that was most dense along these stringy regions of the universe began to coalesce close enough to the point where gravity could take over and begin to form the, form the first stars, no visible light was present in the entire universe. It would have been quite something to see that. So that gives us an idea of what it was like after decoupling, after the, the, the time that the whole universe was like the inside of a star, all of a sudden we, we went past the threshold, the radiation set was set free from the matter. Now we were in what we call the radiation era, and it dominated the universe, but in a way that there was no visible light present in any way. And so that is what we call the radiation era, and sometimes also called the dark ages of the universe.